Welcome back. With us on this segment of the program is Brad Curl. He is known locally and nationwide, really, for his campaign, a prayer campaign against the Playboy mentality. He's also the originator of the Dove Seal for films and videos suitable for family entertainment. And, of course, he is the president of Athletes and Business Leaders for Kids program. We'll talk about that in a minute. Brad, good to have you. It's great to be here. Appreciate it. It's been it. a while. It has been. That's right. I've been on over the years because uh, we started the Chicago Statement about the time you started the station. So we've been uh, buddies uh, together over hmm. the years. A lot of people may not know or remember the Chicago Statement, the Playboy thing. Hmm. Refresh our memories about that. Well, in 1979, uh, I, I was uh, led through fasting and prayer. I prayed and fasted for five days because the Lord had told me on a plane that he wanted me to go to Chicago and I didn't know why. And I live in the Washington, D.C. area. and. Uh, Finally, I fasted and prayed for five days. On the fifth day, he said he wanted me to take 100 men and uh, go to Chicago and release a statement in front of the 37-story Playboy building. And it sounded a little bizarre. I thought maybe I lost my marbles, so I went and checked with some older brothers, <coughs> Dick Halverson, who's now the Senate chaplain, and Doug Coe and Fred Hine, and, and the next day, and they all agreed that this was from the Lord and they'd help me. So we rounded up 100 men and we had a big rally at the Playboy building. We released this statement. We started asking advertisers to pull their support from Playboy. And, Mm. That started a 10-year campaign, which resulted in the Playboy moving out of that building, right. and the signs no longer on the Chicago That's right. skyline. We were there. I remember when yeah. it came down. We used because to pray. for many years that was a part of the Landmark. Chicago skyline That's that you right. saw. Yeah, it just frosted me off every time I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, well, we'd go lay hands on that building. We'd march around that building. We'd pray. Well, it worked. It worked. You know, that's it's some principles there. If you just keep praying and keep showing up, you know, uh, God can multiply your efforts. And now, a lot of your efforts in ministry have been uh, directed against pornography and mm -hmm. that type of thing, the Playboy mentality and just uh, mm -hmm. that whole Well, I was just talking area. with Hiram, Reverend Hiram Crawford. He was just saying we're in a war, and we're, we are in a war, but it's a different kind of war. It's not a war against the imperialist Japanese or the Nazis or, it's a, or against the Great Depression. You know, it's a war. It's, it's a technologically complex insidious war where they've got all our kids wired up to electronic right. delivery devices, you know, and uh, they're delivering absolutely horrifying material and information and influence to our kids and the, and the kids of the world because American uh, programming and videos and magazines and advertising is in Europe, it's in Asia, it's in South America, everywhere in the world. You turn the TV on or you look at the magazine rack and that's what you have. So we are literally polluting the world, and not only our own kids, and, uh, and we just have to get leadership accountable and responsible. And the only way it's gonna happen is that people pray, and we keep holding them accountable, we keep bringing it up, we keep reminding them that they have a responsibility about the kinds of things they distribute, the kind of programs they produce and sponsor, the kind of materials they'll feature in their businesses, et cetera, and, and it's the leadership's responsibility. You know, a lot of people tend to have a little bit of a pessimistic viewpoint mm -hmm. on that kind of a fight because they see it as non-winnable. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about some of the successes you've had down through the years. You mentioned the Playboy thing where that well, certainly had yeah. an impact on them. Well, it's interesting. You know, over the years, <clears throat> we, you know, I just led to coming with 100 men and we had a prayer breakfast and did our thing out there. And then we decided to come every year and do that. And then by the third year or fourth year we'd done that, then it be, we, we had about 12 cities coming all together doing their thing that week. And so we called it Pornography Awareness Week. So the whole nation now, that, at that time that we had our rally at the Playboy Building, the end of October, now focuses on uh, pornography. You know, thousands mm -hmm. of churches and dozens of organizations all focused together at that time. And we went after the advertisers and we saw about 70% of the advertisers pull out of Playboy magazine over the year. Hmm. We saw 60% of their circulation loss. We saw the Playboy casinos, the gambling casinos in London, closed down, oh. which represented 90% of their net profits. We hmm. saw all the Playboy clubs close over those years. We saw all the Playboy resort properties close over those years. We saw the uh, Playboy channel, uh, cable channel, never uh, got, got to break even during those years. They continually lost money and retrenched and, and their aura of acceptability. See, Hugh Hefner is the first pornographer in the history of Judeo-Christian Western culture who had become a popular, accepted, uh, uh, sought-after uh, uh, business leader. Hmm. Uh, you know, governors and presidents and senators. Mm -hmm. I remember I was on the mm -hmm. plane coming out here with Senator Percy one time, and I said, Senator, you know, one of the things that got me fighting Playboy was I, I, uh, 
I got an invitation, or my neighbor got an invitation to a reception on Capitol Hill in Washington to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Playboy magazine. And, and Senator Percy was inviting people to this thing, you know. And I said, I was, I was so mad about that that he would be honored in, our na in the halls of our nation's capital and by our hmm. leadership that it just, you know, that's one of the things something that got me going. Something is wrong with this picture. That's right? right. Something is wrong with this picture. Hmm. And it's funny how the media, you know, we kind of, you know, business and, you know, uh, here's Playboy magazine presented by, uh, you know, Sony and uh, Panasonic, you know, and Toyota or, or uh, uh, Chrysler. Now all of those people, most of those people have pulled out over the years. And then you've got the football All-Americans in there and you've got articles with senators and even the President of the United States. And Senator Percy told me, he says, well, we had such a tremendous audience in there, you know. We, that's why I was in Playboy. I mean, I wanted to reach America's young people. Hmm. Well, we have a pornographic magazine promoting promiscuous sex at a time when we have a sexually transmitted disease epidemic. About one out of four or five Americans has not, uh, highly contagious, non-curable herpes. And a lot of it's come through this uh, mm -hmm. Playboy mentality that's been sold through Playboy magazine and other things. And uh, we just uh, continue to, uh, to accept it and uh, don't think about what we're doing. Let's talk about videos and films. You have the Dove seal. Mm -hmm. How widely is that seal being accepted and used in video stores? Well, we have over 600 uh, video stores that now have a Dove section, our Dove seal mm -hmm. of approval for films and videos we can recommend for the family. And uh, there are some large chains that are just about to come on. So we're hoping within the next year or two we'll have two or 3,000 stores. And that's a good positive market demand. It says, Hollywood, if you'll give us more clean movies that we can approve of with our seal, uh, we'll give you our money. What's your criteria for a well, movie or a video know, getting the you know, Basically, the you know, nudity, language, uh, uh, extreme violence, uh, family appropriateness, theme appropriateness for the family and for children. and. Uh, Excuse me, it would probably be similar to a G-rated movie, actually, but uh, uh, it, we're approaching it from a positive standpoint that this is recommended. So what's mm -hmm. happening is a lot of video store owners are putting their family-oriented movies in a section where they're featured more and where people will find them more, so they're getting more rental mileage out of a lot of videos they've got in the store that anyway. That wouldn't be rented. That that's much, right, probably. that's right. Now, should our, should our viewers ask for this Dove seal? Should they approach their video stores Absolutely. and say... Absolutely. Tell them, say, yeah, have you heard about the Dove? Try to get, they've probably heard about it in their trade journals and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, it's funny, you know, we went to the big video con convention in Las Vegas where all of the world's buyers of American movies and videos come. And uh, the overseas video market for American films is much bigger than the domestic video really? market. Really? So the whole world is there buying Hollywood product. And you've got MGM and Disney and Penthouse and Playboy and, hmm. and the Warner Brothers. They're all there. And we had our booth. We have our booth there every year now. And Steve Allen, you know, the famous comedian, came mm -hmm. to be in our booth. And here we were in the middle of this huge sea of media. And uh, it was Steve Allen. We had the biggest line of people trying to get his autograph. And we were on the front page in color of the, of the uh, uh, Las Vegas newspaper. Uh, and uh, we, were the, we were the focus for the whole video convention because oh, of Steve Allen and Michael Venvid that came over. So we, we were just holding up the standard of Christ in the middle of this unsavory sea of material. <laughs> and uh, because we were just on the floor, you know, doing business like everybody else, uh, we had tremendous respect and acceptance. And, uh, and we're seeing as we visit the Hollywood, uh, uh, you know, d movie uh, executives, we're getting through to them that, uh, hey, right. if, you, if, you, if you produce more decent stuff, you know, I think you're five times more likely to reach $100 million in box office sales for a PG or G-rated movie than you are for an R-rated movie. Hmm. So why not make more, uh, you know, family-rated movies? Is that a change? Because I know at one time, you know, the filmmakers just didn't want a G rating because it was just like, you know, Ichabod on their films almost. Uh, the R-rated movies hmm. were selling better. Is that a change we're seeing? Well, it seemed like that, but actually the big movies are the Disney movies, are the movies that are PG and G. That's true, and you know, these yeah. are the movies probably that are purchased more mm -hmm. by families, yeah. for their children that, you, that they can mm -hmm. watch over and over, so I could see that. I remember talking profitable. to Michael Medved one time, and he was saying the ironic thing is if you actually look at the dollars and the numbers, mm -hmm. the big money is in the, the G-rated and the family yeah, entertainment absolutely. pictures. Sure. And yet, that's when you talk to the movie people, they yeah. say, oh, the, the American public wants the R-rated yeah. stuff, right. and that's not where it's the not big true. dollars are. That's right, and uh, Michael Medved's book, uh, Michael's a good friend, and his book, uh, Hollywood Versus America, is a real good book. Get it if you can. We just had him with us recently. Yeah, yeah and uh, 
for the he, 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 One studio executive bought 25 copies for all his executives, and Michael said they'd be worth having written the book just for that. Wow. Because it's getting through, and they are making, we, we, uh, we in a recent string of new release movies out of Hollywood, uh, we approved almost half of them with our Dove Seal uh, recently, uh, wow. a particular group. So that's a good trend it's because good trend. 60, 70 percent of the movies uh, since 1966 have been R-rated. Hmm. Very sad. I think we can see a, a different trend with with the movies that won the Oscars this year yeah. Yeah. as opposed to what's won in the past. Yeah. I think we do see a different trend. I think there's a change. You know, if mm -hmm. we just keep praying and keep showing up... Uh, uh, things happen. What about the music industry? Are you involved with that? You know, we've heard a lot about the fights for decent lyrics, or at mm -hmm. least the the warnings of of objectionable material. What's happening on that front? Well, it's like everything else. It's it's these are businesses that produce and distribute and feature uh, raunchy material, whether it's music or M M MTVs. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, it's it's sort of like Warner Brothers not only produces the movies, they they're the biggest producer of uh, recordings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that produce Madonna and produce and distribute Madonna and Prince. Prince had a famous record about incest, you know, encouraging incest with his sister. And now uh, they're having a re. There's a big. I've noticed a full page in uh, Entertainment Weekly magazine recently where Warner Brothers is promoting the old Prince records now, like that one, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, See, it's insane. We had a big protest in front of the Time Warner building in, uh, in New York City last year about the Madonna book that they're distributing. But see, same, it's a business. They're distributors, whether it's, uh, it's MTVs, and we can affect them by protest mm -hmm. and by uh, buying the positive stuff and, and, and congratulating when they do the good things and by reminding them that the good things make money and, and, and then boycotting products and advertisers of those that help them distribute the raunchy stuff. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we just got to keep speaking out. And, and, and in some cases, we can use the legislation. Let's talk a little bit about a project that I know is near and dear to your heart right now, the Athletes and Businessmen Together for Kids. What's that all about? Well, as we've gone from city to city over the years, you know, to try to get a group together to f stand for decency, we'd, we'd bring a former Playboy bunny, or we'd bring the Atlanta prosecutor who shut down all the X-rated businesses, or mm -hmm. we'd bring uh, Senator Grassley or Congressman Wolf or somebody to try to draw a crowd. And we just noticed over the years, if we'd bring an athlete or two, we'd, we'd have more open doors. So we started a program called Athletes and Business Leaders for Kids. And we had, we've had, uh, since 87, we have a school assembly program. We do, we've done 60 cities. With, we'll do school assemblies in uh, Chicago this spring. And uh, we've done uh, hundreds of schools, thousands of kids. And uh, while we're in town, we'll meet with some of the business leaders to encourage them to set standards about what they'll sponsor with their ads, what kind of programming is it. The programming they want to identify with, the kind of materials they'll carry in their stores, or if they have a chain store and so on, mm -hmm. to try to rally the business leadership from city to city as we go around. So I have a little circuit that I run around the country. I'm in New York City every Wednesday. I'm usually on Capitol Hill every Friday lobbying. And uh, just keep chipping away as God what, gives what us kind of, Give us the name of some of the athletes that are involved with you in this. Well, uh, Matt Millen's a famous uh, ball player. He was here with me last year doing uh, schools here in the south side of Chicago. Matt's a, a sports announcer with CBS and has gone over to Fox, which I, I've, I've been teasing him about that because Fox <laughs> has married with children and a couple other things that aren't so great. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we have uh, Anthony Munoz has stood for us also, and uh, we have about 100, 100 athletes. You get good response from both the school officials, the administration, and the students when you do assembly programs we like that? We really do. If you come in and talk about values and uh, kids being careful what they take in their body and their mind, drugs and pornography, and then these are all Christian athletes and they generally share their faith as well. And uh, we're finding in schools in Manhattan and schools, and we were just in Florida the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, that the teachers say, you know, these kids can't have morality without God. It doesn't work. You can't teach values if there's no God. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I remember we were in this school in Staten Island a few years ago, and I had a player with us who's the, the all-time yardage, combined yardage leader for the Jets, Bruce Harper. And he wasn't a very experienced speaker. And he was a new believer, and he just sort of gave his testimony. Well, I, I used to do drugs and had a lot of problems. I came to Christ, and my life cleaned up, and my marriage improved. And, mm -hmm. and you know, he just kind of gave a little testimony, like he would in church or somebody. He was in a school, and the Jewish teachers and everything, and I, oh, man, mm -hmm. they're going to jump on his case. Well, a little Jewish teacher came up, and she says, I'm so glad you talked about God. She said, you know, we get so discouraged and 
uh, and depressed working with these kids. You know, we, we, we need God and they Isn't need, that they need you God. You know, that is encouraging so because all, all we hear about is the fact that you cannot mention God in Separation any way. Separation of church and that's, and that's yeah. direct in contrast to that. Yeah, you know, I just was looking at a piece of money today. It says in there, in God we trust. We have a Senate chaplain. We have chaplains in the Army. What's this idea that we have to eliminate God from public mm -hmm. life? I just think we got to, uh, you know, keep taking ground. As long as we do it in a gracious way, and in, in, in uh, seven years and in, in thousands of uh, situations, we've had three complaints. So, wow. so that's worth a good record. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Brad, it's good to have you back and uh, get an update on what's happening. That's an encouraging well, word today. Well, thank you. My pleasure to be here. Our best to you, and keep up the good work. God bless you. Thank Brad you. Curl, always glad to have him with us. Huntley Brown is coming back now as we wrap up the program. This is probably one of the most uh, beloved hymns all around the world. It is well with my soul. Thank you. 